hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel so um i really appreciate you guys for your subscription and your like um you can also comment on the comment section below if you like the video and if the video was helpful um so we are going to continue on for our series now what we are trying to do today is even an odd function so now we are going to go back going, i'm going to treat the basics or yeah what you need to know about even an odd function then we go straight to solving an example so um so what we have in front of us right here is um an even and odd function so what is an even an even function an even function is said to be even if the function of negative x is equal to the function of positive x right so what is this trying to say that if i put a, a negative x in a function and the value is equal to when i put positive x in that function that function is an even function for example now let's consider x squared right now this is a function of x right so if i put negative x here meaning that let me put a, a negative value of x with some let's say for example like minus 2 so this gives me minus 2 raised to power 2 which is 4 right now let's put a positive value of x2 which is plus 2 this also gives me 4 so you see this is an even function that's why it's very very easy so um now there's another property of an even function now they said the graph of an even function is symmetrical about the y-axis so for every every even function graph, this the y-axis will cut the graph, will cut a specific portion of the graph into two equal parts. So now this line of symmetry is just a line that cuts a shape into two equal parts. So this line of this y-axis now cuts this shape into two equal parts. So if I try to take the area of this triangle, the area of this triangle, for example, it should be the the the, integ the integral below the line, right? Remember area um the area of, area of a line. The area of the shape below a line is actually the integral of that line. So if I take the integral of this line, for example, taking the integral of this line, that is integral coming from 0 to a of the function of x, right? Taking the integral of this line to that is plus integral coming from minus a to 0 of the function of x. Now these two here, this, this, this summing the two areas should be able to give me the total area of this triangle, right? Which is integral coming from minus a to a of the function of x dx. So there's a rule that says... Integral coming from minus a to, to 0 of the function of x is equal to the integral coming from 0 to a of the function of x. So I can substitute this for this here. So we're having 0 to a of the function of x dx plus 0 to a of function of x dx is equal to minus a to a of the function of x dx. So since these two are equal, so this can, can be written as 2 integral coming from 0 to a of the function of x dx equals integral coming from minus a to a of the function of x dx so this is um, one of the most important important properties of an even function so this is the most important property of an even function 2 times integral coming from 0 to a of the function of x is equal to integral coming from minus a to a of function of x dx so now let's dive through the theorem behind even function for a Fourier series, right? So um, first, let's 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 let me explain what odd function is. Okay, so now an even function is said to be, sorry, an odd function is said to be odd if the function the function of negative x is equal to minus the function of positive x. Now, it it means that when I put a negative x into a function. It should give me an equal result as when I get the negative of that function but with positive value of x. So now, for example, let's take an example. Let's say fx is x raised to the power 3. Now, this right here is an odd function, right? This right here is an odd function. So, um, let's check if it's an odd function. So, when I put um, f minus 2, right? Let me put f minus 2. So, this is minus raised to the power 3, which is equal to minus 8, right? Now, let me put f of 2 in this this is 8 right you see that this is not equal unless i multiply this by minus 1 or take the negative of this which will give me minus 8 so you see that minus the positive value of x does not give me the exact result of f of the function of negative value of x unless i minus it unless i multiply by minus 1 or take the negative of it which satisfies the condition for an odd function so you say so i say fx so x to the power 3 here is an odd function. So now that's um, by the way. So now 
um, there's an, another important property of an odd function. It is symmetrical about the origin. So if you look at this graph, it's um, the y-axis does not actually cut it into two equal parts, right? It's um, the origin itself. This is the origin. It tries to separate it into two equal parts. So it's actually different from your even function. So now, unlike just like the even function we did for the area, if I assume this to be a straight line, if I get the area of this, remember the area of this is minus the area of this, right? And the area of this is your integral coming from zero to a of the function of x dx, and the area of this right here is integral coming from minus a to zero of function of x dx, right? And these things they are um, opposite opposite each other, they are subtracting each other, right? So if I replace this with the function, if I replace it with your normal function this can also be replaced with if, if i assume to be if i assume it to be an even function this can also be replaced with zero to a of function of x dx from zero to a of function of x dx so this minus this is equal to zero right so what this is trying to tell us that what this is trying to tell us that now since this this and this are both areas of of this triangle if I, like summing the two areas together you know i'm supposed to get minus a to a of function of x dx right so what this is trying to tell us that minus a to a of function of x dx for an odd function is zero. So this is one of the most important property of an odd function. So now let's go to the sign the um the another aspect for odd and even function, which is very is I call this the most important um point you need to note um on this video before we proceed to solving. Or before we proceed to uh, or before I proceed to show you how to solve a question involving odd and even function. This um property we are looking at is the product of odd and even functions. So now look at this um look at this um point that has been outlined. Now what is this is trying to tell us that even times odd function will give us an even function, meaning that when I multiply two functions that are said to be even, the function I'm going to get is still going to be an even function. Odd times odd function gives me an, ev an even function. Odd times even function gives me odd. Even times odd gives me odd. Now the way best way to remember this is assume my even my even my even here is a, is plus sign and my odd is minus sign. So you can use your normal um arithmetic sign convention. Plus plus times plus is plus. Plus times uh, minus times minus is is minus times minus is plus. Minus times plus is minus. Plus times minus is minus. So you can use where my even is or where my even is plus and my odd is minus. You can use it, you can use this your sign convention to your normal sign convention to remember this. So now the um let's go to theorem in which or for even another function in which we use to solve for your series questions. So the theorem in front of us says if a function fx is defined over an interval minus pi to pi. Now, if you can remember all our intervals we have been considering since the beginning of Fourier series question or since the beginning of Fourier series lesson. Uh, is just uh is the periodic period period of two pi. So if you look at this, this is the period of two pi minus pi two pi. Taking if I subtract two of them, it gives me two pi. So so, and um, f x is even. Then the Fourier series of f x will contain cosine terms only. Now what is this, what the, what is this trying to tell us? This is trying to tell us that in uh, for an even function, trying to calculate the Fourier series for an even function, you will not have any sine term. If you can remember your general formula for 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 Fourier series, which says f x is equal to a naught divided by two plus summation of summation starts from n equal to one to infinity a n cos n x plus b n sine n x. So for even function, there will be no sine term, only cosine term. So I can just say b n it will be equal to zero for Fourier series of an even function. So now um, let's just note some part. So for example, you note know, when you ask calculate Fourier series of it of it. Of a function, you have to calculate your a naught. You have to calculate your a naught. My a and my a naught. Remember, if you remember the formula for a naught for your for, from your Fourier series is one over pi, therefore from minus pi to pi of function of x dx, right? Now um, the same rule applies when we if you look at the beginning of our video, the same rule applies in which we said integral comes from minus pi to pi of the function of x or minus a to a of function of x is equal to two integral coming from zero to a zero to pi of that function of x we prove this um you can also you can actually also prove this at your own leisure time because these are uh, two identities so that we apply it to the same the same place so a naught is equal to 
1 over pi 2 times 0 to pi of function of x dx right so this can be written as 2 over pi integral come from 0 to pi function of x dx so either way you can actually use this to solve for a naught or you can also you can as well use this to solve for a naught whichever one is your choice so now for a and 2 this rule also applies 1 over pi times 2 integral come from 0 to pi of function of x remember a n is having cos n x so this can be written as a n is equal to 2 over pi of function of 0 to 0 to pi that's integral from, from 0 to pi of function of x cos n x so that way you can use this to solve for a for a subscript n you can use this to solve for a subscript n or you can use your normal formula for a subscript n to solve to get your answer so now let's check for bn now remember we said so bn should be zero so that it will contain only cosine term which which will satisfy the theorem for Fourier series of an even function now let's check some some stuff now before we check that now from a naught right remember this 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 is even function we are talking of right this is the theorem for even function that means my you know this is formula for my a naught right which is 2 over pi that come from 0 to pi function of x dx right this um, even function we are talking of that my, fun my function of x is an even function right so an -N, a n right a n is 2 over pi that come from 0 to pi a function of x cos n x now n f x here is an even function right now every cosine term itself is an even function every sine term is an odd function so if f x here is an even function right and cos n x here is also an even function multiplying this to even fu function of x times cos um, cos n x that means this is like saying even function times even function now if you can remember our um, representation back then or um product of even and odd function there we said every even and odd function odd function multiplying each other will def definitely give me an even function so this is just like saying this whole thing here is also an even function so for bn now let's check for bn now, your normal formula for bn this star rule also apply for bn this is 2 over pi starting from 0 to pi of function of x sine nx now for bn remember we are, we are talking of even function right that means fx here is an even function right so but in this case sine nx is not an even function sine nx is an odd function right every sine function is an odd function you can prove it so that means even times odd gives me an odd function right so this whole thing here is an odd function and if you can remember the property of an odd function in which we say the integral comes from minus a to a of the function of x right of an odd function if fx is an odd function is equal to zero right so this means that the integral this integral this whole 2 pi 0 0 of from pi from 0 to pi or we can write it using the normal formula which is 1 over pi integral so that to satisfy this condition 1 over pi integral coming from minus pi to pi of function of x sine nx so the rule says integral coming from minus a to a of function of x dx is equal to 0 for odd function so since fx times nx here this whole thing here is an odd function integral coming from minus pi to pi which satisfies it minus a to a so that means bn is equal to zero so that is why bn is equal to zero so for odd for even function if, if our Fourier series formula our Fourier series formula will be giving us fx is equal to a not divided by two plus um, summation start from n equal to one to infinity of a n cos n x because bn is zero that is why the root if the theorem says for even function, your Fourier series will contain only cosine term only. So this is the Fourier series for even function, which is very easy to remember. So the, this this is also the same thing as when you are asked to find the Fourier series for cosine terms. This is when this is the same thing when you are asked to find the Fourier series for cosine terms. So instead of you going once you identify that okay, the, the function you are asked to find is an even function, then you can just go straight to using this formula. For finding the cosine term of a Fourier series, but in most cases you might, you might you might not know if it's an even or odd function. You might need you might need to calculate a not a n even b n even to check if b n is equal to zero. So in so in most cases when you ask to find your Fourier series for for a cosine term, this is what this is the formula that should come to you to your mind. So now let's check for even for odd function. Let's check for odd function. So now for even function, it said it is said that b n where b n is equal to zero. This is for even function. So now let's check for odd function, which is theorem two. And now look at this um, 
theorem 2 for odd function now it says if fx is an odd function over the interval minus pi to pi then the Fourier series of fx should contain sine terms only now meaning that uh, the, unlike our even function we did which the Fourier series should contain sine term only for odd function the Fourier series should contain only sorry even in which for even function the Fourier series should contain cosine term only then but for our, my odd function, the Fourier series contains sine terms only. So meaning that, um, now let's take for it. Let's see. Since my a naught, my a naught right is one over pi. This is the general form, form formula for my a naught. One over pi, pi minus pi to pi of function of x dx, right? Now for even function, um, the rule says that integral coming from minus pi to minus a to a of the function of x dx is equal to zero, right? So assuming a is is assuming my a is um pi. Then applying the same rule to this, this will make my a naught to be equal to zero. Right. So let's check for a n two a subscript. So for a subscript n, this is the general formula for a subscript n, right? For minus pi to pi of function of x dx, multiplying your cosine n x dx, right? Remember, f x is an odd function, right? We are considering f x to be an odd function. So if you look at this, this is cos, like I said, cos nx is an even function. So we're having odd times even, right? And odd times even from our um, representation, if you can forward back a little, you see it as it be from the intro of the video. Odd times even is always an odd function, right? So this means that this whole function here is an odd function. And if you remember, your integral comes from minus, pi to minus a to a of, of an odd function. Remember, fx is an odd function of the x is equal to zero. So integral comes from minus pi to pi of this whole odd function is equal to zero so my a naught and my a n is equal to zero so for b n now let's check for b n my b n this is one over pi it's going to come from minus pi to pi or function of x sine and x dx and now the the theorem says fx is an odd function right so fx is an odd function and we said sine nx2 is also an odd function so if you can remember the presentation odd times odd is even so which makes this whole function here to be an even function and if you can remember, integral coming from minus pi to pi for an even function, integral coming from minus a to a of function of x, which if it's an even function, is equal to 2 integral coming from 0 to a of function of x dx. So this rule applies for even function only. So we can apply the same rule to bn. So bn is equal to 2 over pi integral coming from 0 to pi of function of x sine nx. So the bn is the only... Um, so bn is the only... Um, variable in um, for odd function that is not equal to zero, so that is why the Fourier series will contain only sine term only. So this is B n. So for the Fourier series of an odd function f x now is equal to summation right from n equal to one to infinity for B n sine n x, where B n is equal to this. So this is the Fourier series for calculating odd function. That is why the series contain only sine term only because a naught is zero and a n is equal to zero. So if you can remember these um, two um, conditions for odd and even function, you are good to go in solving your Fourier series question. So um, not to make this, not not to make this video uh, too long, um, we are going to stop here. So now on our next video, we can, we take we take an example on how to calculate um, or how to know when you are giving odd function and even odd um, even function and how to calculate their Fourier series. So in most cases, you will not, you might not see calculate the Fourier series of an even function. You will just see calculate the cosine term of this function. So when you see calculate the cosine term from from this function, in most cases, the, that function is an even function. But in, mo in most cases, it is not an even function. It is neither. It is neither even nor odd. So you might just need to calculate your normal Fourier series. Use your normal Fourier series method to solve. So thank you guys for watching and please and please do so well to hit that like button and your subscribe button if you like the video and uh, peace.